Okay, so um, our group, myself, Pritha Chitas, rule number 78, Shubhastri Paul, rule number 38, and Pratik Chakraborty, rule number 80, has prepared a small presentation on the topic pumping lemma. Though pumping lemma is a small topic, but it is of utmost importance in the formal language and automata theory subject. So before moving into the detailed presentation, I would like to give a small content overview. Our presentation will cover the following topics, which is the introduction, a small introduction, and the types of pumping lemma, which are obviously equivalent to the pumping lemma for regular languages, with example, and pumping lemma for context-free languages, for example, as well. And there are a few question and answers which we will cover at the end. So, uh, moving on to the introduction, the pumping lemma for regular languages is actually mean that if a string V is pumped, that is, if V is inserted in any number of times, the resultant string still remains in the language itself. The pumping lemma is actually used to prove that the language is not regular. So, if a language is regular, it always satisfies the pumping lemma. So, it is actually used to prove that the irregularity of a language. On the other hand, pumping lemma for the context-free language states that for any context-free language L, it is possible to find two substrings that can be pumped any number of times and still be in the same language. For any language L, we can break the strings into five and pump second and fourth substring, which is V and Y respectively. Pumping lemma here also is used to prove that the particular language is not context-free. So, if any one string does not satisfy its conditions, then the language is not context-free at all. As I told earlier, we will be covering two particular topics, that is pumping lemma for regular language and pumping lemma for context-free language in this particular presentation. So, moving on to the pumping lemma for regular language, it states that if A is a regular language, then A has a pumping length, which is, let us say it as P, such that any string S, but there is a condition that S should be greater than or equal to the pumping length P, may be divided into three parts, where S should be equal to X, Y, Z respectively. And it should follow a few conditions or few agendas, I can say. The first one of it is X, Y to the power I, Z should belong to e. that means that particular language itself for any instance of i which is greater than or equal to zero. My second condition states that the length of y should be greater than zero and followed by the third condition which is the length of x, y should be less than or equal to the pumping length p. Now there are a few steps that I would like to go through in according to solve a particular example with the help of pumping lemma. Now, if we need to prove that a particular language is not regular using pumping lemma, we need to follow a few certain steps. Generally, what we will be doing is we will be finding one contradiction. So we can say that no, the particular given language is not regular. So beforehand, we need to assume that A, that is my particular language, is regular and it should have a certain pumping length, for example, P. Now, all the strings longer than the pumping length P can be pumped when the length of S is greater than or equal to the pumping length P. Now, I need to find an instance, an example, string S in my particular language A such that the length of S should be greater than or equal to P. Now, the example which we took, the string S, we can divide it into three parts, X, Y and Z respectively. Now, since our first condition was that and we need to show that x, y to the power i and z does not belong to a for some value of i. Then we need to consider all the ways that s can be divided into x, y and z. Finally, we can show that none of this can satisfy all the three pumping conditions at the same time. It can satisfy few pumping conditions, but not all the three at the same instance. So finally, I can conclude that S cannot be pumped. So I immediately find a contradiction. So I can finally give my verdict that the language which we were been given is not regular. So let's just give an example on this particular topic. So uh, I have been given a language A, which is equal to A to the power N, B to the power N. 
and n is greater than equal to zero. I need to prove that this language is not regular, and I will be taking the help of pumping lemma to do so. Now, before I am assuming that the language a, which is equal to a to the power n and b to the power n, I am assuming beforehand that this particular language is regular. Now it should be having a pumping length. So let's just say that the pumping length is p. Now we are taking a string s. So I can replace a to the power n and b to the power n. Basically, I can replace n with p. So my s, the given string which we took as example. Reduces to a to the power p, b to the power p. Now I am taking the value of p, the pumping length. I am taking it as seven. So my value becomes a to the power seven and b to the power seven. So the string which we chose is actually none other than seven a's followed by seven b's. So I can be having three cases over here. Since a uh, I mentioned earlier that I need to show that x y to the power i and z does not belong to A. Now here i is being raised to the power y, as we can see. So I will be focusing on y itself. In case one, I'm taking that the y portion is actually entirely in the portion A. As we can see, there are two A's which belongs to A, but that is um, not the main thing. But the second portion, which is four A's, are belonging to Y. So Y does not have any B part in it. Y entirely lies in the section of A, and it is being followed by Z, which is one A and followed by seven B. Now I can be having case number two, where my Y is in the portion B. As we can see, that X is being uh, seven A's and two B's. And the y portion is entirely lying on B, which is four Bs itself. So there is no A portion, and followed by a Z portion, which is only B. And it can be a case where y belongs both the A portion and B portion of my particular string. So here, as we can see, that X is uh, my five As, and y belongs to two As and two Bs. So y is having a combination of A and B itself. And followed by a Z portion. Now we'll be examining each case one by one. In case number one, as I just mentioned, the Y portion is entirely in A. That is my four A's. So I need to prove that X Y to the power I and Z does not belong to A. That is my main conditional criteria that I need to prove a contradiction over here. So here I am taking the value of I as two for all the three cases. So if I take the value of I as two, so my given expression becomes x y to the power two z. So x and then y is being repeated twice to the power square, and followed by a z. So the given string becomes eleven a's followed by seven b's. Now, if you remember correctly, that our question was. It should be having n number of a's and n number of b's. So the number of a's and number of b's should be same. But in this particular case, I am having eleven number of a's and seven number of b's. So there is a contradiction in here itself. The number of a's and b's are not same. So I can see that uh, this particular thing does not follow my condition. Moving on to case number two, I can see that uh, the b lies entirely. In my y portion, so there is no x a portion interference in b. So in this particular case as well, I can have seven a's and eleven b's. Again, the same condition arises that the number of a's and b's are dissimilar over here. So this is also wrong. And case number three is when my y will be containing both a and b portions. So here I can see that the number of a's and b's are similar, but If we can remember correctly, I need to follow the sequence a to the power n and b to the power n. Over here, my sequence is getting disrupted. Though the number of a's and b's are equal in the third case, the sequence that um, a should be in the first sequence and b should be in the second sequence is being disrupted in between. We can see that a b b a and followed by a b. So this should not be the case. So we 
already proved that this particular case is not the condition for a regular language so the particular language is not regular we are clear with it but since this one that x y should be less than equal to p let's just move on and uh, check that so that would be in the first case the x y the length of x y is 6 the length of x y we know the next question the x and y becomes 13 It's not less than equal. So this particular statement is wrong. And the third case is also same, where um, the x and y portions are nine, which is not equal to seven, which is not uh, less than equal to seven. So which is wrong as well. So uh, this particular thing we can um, prove that the language which we took is not regular at all with the help of pumping lemma, since we proved a contradiction. That uh, my all the three criteria or agendas cannot be fulfilled at the same instance of time. So, I would like Shubhoshri to uh, come up and uh, continue with the rest of the presentation, please. So now we will be moving to pumping lemma for context free language. Uh, if A is a context free language, then A has a pumping length P. Such that any string s where the length of s is greater or equal to p may be divided into five pieces, as in here mentioned, s equals to u, v, x, y, and z. Such that the following conditions are true. The first condition is uh, u v raised to the power i, x y raised to the power i, and z must belong to the length. For every i greater or equal to zero, and the length of v y should be greater than zero, and the length of v x and y should be less or equal to the same length p. And uh, to prove that, uh, we have the following uh, steps. I would like to pass move on to the next slide. So here, uh, beforehand, we are mentioning. That the language is a context. We will be proving it through a contradiction that pumping lemma uh, is not uh, pumping lemma is used for not a contextual language. So uh, we assume that uh, A is a contextual language and it has a pumping length p. And all the strings should be uh, greater or equal to p. Now we will find a string s. Such that the length of s is greater or equal to p. Now we are will be dividing the s into five equal parts, not equal actually, but five parts. So uh, with for some value of r, then. We consider all the ways such that the s can be divided into the five parts: u, v, x, y, and z. And we will be showing that none of them can satisfy the three pumping conditions all at the same instance. So, uh, therefore, there will be a contradiction, and thus the uh, s cannot be found. Now, with the help of an example. We will uh, show. We will see how pumping lemma for contextual language works. So here we have an example with uh, uh, language uh, a a to the power p, b to the power p, and c to the power p. So uh, and it, uh, the p is the pumping length and the s is the string. So uh, we will uh, if we put p equals to four, then the string becomes a raised to the power four, b raised to the power four, and c raised to the power four. So we uh, now assume that the 
language is a contextual language and I would like to talk to you on to the next slide. Now, uh, how we can divide the uh, string into five parts? Uh, there might be two cases where the first case is that B and Y each contain only one type of symbol and the case two is either B or Y has more than one kind of symbol. So, for the first case, uh, we will uh, divide the string as uh, u will be equal to a, b will be equal to 2 times a, and x will be equal to 1 times a, and 4 times b, and 1 times c, and y will be equal to 1 times c, and z will be equal to 2 times c. But, uh, we have the uh, condition. That is the first condition that uh, u, v raised to the power i, x, y raised to the power i, and z should also belong to the language. Now, let's see what happens if we put i equals to 2. So, um, the, a, the following thing becomes a raised to the power 6, b raised to the power 4, and c raised to the power 5 which contradicts that the fact that A, B and C should be same and it does not belong to the language. So, um, moving further to the next case, that is, uh, either B and Y have more than one kind of symbols. Here, U equals to 2 times A, B equals to 2 times A and 2 times C, X equals to y equals to a uh, single time b and z equals to 4 times c. Now again if we see that uh, if we put the value of i as 2 we will be seeing that the solution comes to be as 4 times a then 2 times b then 2 times b then 5 times b then 4 times c which does not follow the sequence of uh, a raised to the power n, b raised to the power n and c raised to the power n. So, here is also a contradiction. So, uh, our assumption that l is a context-free language does not hold. So, l is not a context-free language. Now, I would uh, like Pratik to continue with the next one. Change the slide. Yes. Uh, delete the following statement. Uh, the statement is uh, all sufficiently long words in a regular language can have a middle section of words repeated a number of times to produce a uh, new word which also lies within the same language. Options are uh, Turing machine, pumping lemma, Arden's theorem, and none of the mentioned. The answer is pumping lemma. For pumping lemma defines an essential property for a pre-regular language in automata theory, and it has certain rules which decide whether the language is regular or not. The second uh, slide. Yes. While uh, applying pumping lemma over a language, uh, we consider a string W that belongs to L and uh, fragment it uh, into uh, number of parts. Uh, there are three number of parts because uh, we select a string W uh, such that W is equal to X, Y, Z and mod Y is greater than 0 and other conditions however they exist uh, an integer N such that mod W greater than equal to N for any L. A language L satisfies the pumping lemma for reg regular language and also the pumping lemma for context free language. Which of the following statement uh, about L is true? L is necessary. Uh, a regular language is not true. 
uh, it is necessarily a context free language but not necessarily a regular language it's also not true it is necessarily a non regular language it's also not true so none of that let w is equal to x y z and uh, y refers to the middle portion of uh, mod y is greater than 0 uh, what we uh, do we call the process repeating 0 um, or more times before checking uh, that they still belong to language alone so it's uh, generating pumping producing a nano it's uh, pumping cause and the uh, process of repeating is called pumping so pumping is the process we perform the um, check whether the pump, pump string belongs to L or not pumping lemma for uh, regular language generally used for proving whether a, a given regular expressions are equivalent not correct a given uh, grammar is ambiguous it's also not correct the given grammar is regular it's also not correct and a given number is not regular it's correct fill in the blanks in terms of p where p is the maximum stream then in l statement is the finite automata language uh, trivially, trivially uh, satisfies the pumping lemma by having n is equal to is obviously p plus one uh, cause uh, finite uh, language trivially satisfies the pumping lemma by having n equally the maximum string length uh, is l plus one answer in accordance to the third and the last statement in pumping name for all for all dash is x y number z belongs to l it's uh, not uh, i is equal to greater than zero also not i less than zero i greater than equal to zero because uh, suppose l is a regular language then there is an uh, integer and so that for uh, any x will fail and mod x greater than equal to n there is string the uh, ubw so that uh, x is equal to ubw mod uv less than equal to n and mod v greater than equal to 0 for any m greater than 0 upn w belongs to l Consider the uh, regular language L um, x uh, x is equal to a to the power um, 2 plus 3k or x uh, is equal to b to the power 10 plus 12k where k greater than equal to 0. Which of the following can be pumping length of L? So here the first we um, options are 3, 5, 9 and uh, 24. We um, uh, see the explanation. According to pumping lemma, there must be a repetition for all acceptable strings. Therefore, minimum pumping length should be 11 because string length is 10. Uh, w is equal to b to the power 10. Does not repeat anything, but string with length 11 will uh, repeat states. So, uh, pumping lemma for giving language should be greater than 10, which is 24. So D is correct. Let W be a string and fragmented by three variables x, y, and z by pumping lemma. What does this variable represent? Uh, string count. It's string count. And other options are not. It's not string. Uh, explanation is on uh, the given uh, on W is equal to x, y, z. Hence, uh, x, y, z individually represents string or other substrings which we compute over conditions to check the regularity of the language so it's a string count and the last question is and the logic of pumping lemma is good example of which uh, it's uh, not divide conquer not recursion not interesting it's an uh, example of pigeonhole principle
थैंक यू वेरी गुड प्रेजेंटेशन